Have you ever came across something that really got your attention that you just end up doing research about? That is exactly how I feel about real-time data logging. It's not necessarily that you have to do it, but when you get into it and the deeper and deeper you go, how much information you can find out about your car, trust me, it's any car enthusiast dream to be able to see all of these things so yes i mean your dashboard does show you your speed it does show you your rpms and maybe that you're out of fuel <laughs> but actually being a uh, being able to data log your car that is literally next level you can actually see that if you have a boost leak or not like you might think this is the power my car has but you're losing like five psi maybe on boost or it could be something as simple as a high pressure fuel pump running at 100 percent duty cycle meaning that it's working at its best and you don't even know about it so what we're going to do is i'm going to drop uh, somewhere here on the screen a time frame for you guys if you want to go and check out how i start of this data logging straight away what i want to do quickly is i want to explain to the people that does not really know data logging or the great information it can give you uh, i just want to spend some time with you guys real quick so the first time i came across data logging i saw rob dam he's actually a very usual youtuber so he actually did a run on his four bullet rotor rx7 so after he did his run he looked at his data logs and he noticed something he's like my alternator is too small for the car. I was like, what? Dude, you want to... <laughs> Sorry, guys. I was like, really? You want to tell me your alternator is keeping your max performance back? How would one just turn around? Because I didn't know about data logging back then. Like, how could you just turn around and say, it's my alternator? But yet again, I was thinking to myself, I see so many other people, they'll be like, no, my intercooler was a problem. No, this was the problem. This is the problem. This is what I got to upgrade next. And I was like... How do people know what they should upgrade next? So this is where data logging comes in place. For example, with that pool where he said his alternator just wasn't coping. So technically the alternator was holding his volts all the way and as the RPMs increase, as it increased, when it gets to a certain level, the voltage starts dropping from the alternator because it couldn't give all the voltage or the amps or whatever it is to the engine uh, when it's at its high RPMs. It was just requesting so much power, the alternator couldn't handle it. So obviously when he changed the alternator, guess what? He made more power. That was the day I told myself that I'm going to start data logging my car. <laughs> I'm going to data log the crap out of it. All right, so there's a lot of things. You can actually see if your intercooler is actually doing its work. For example, the intake air temperature. If, if you actually accelerate, remember, the more you accelerate, the harder the turbo works. But the intercooler, with all the air ventilation going through it, it should keep it cool. So you literally want the intercooler that can keep the same temperature or even go less temperature as you accelerate. As soon as you see your temperature is going up, you know your intercooler is insufficient. It's bringing hot air into your engine. You're losing power, guys. I am so excited for this new journey. I'm gonna data log, data log, data log the heck out of this car. So, today we are gonna be using VCDS. Yes, there is other ways. VCDS is for VAG cars only. Okay, I, I mean, I've never actually placed it on a Ford or anything from that, so I'm, I'm not even sure it will communicate. But yes, this is only for VAG cars. And yeah, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna open VCDS and we are gonna data log this car today. But we are not gonna do any specific data logging, whereas we're gonna go look at the the timing of the car being removed because i'm going to do that with you we're not going to go do any information regarding if the intercooler is okay or if we're losing boost or if our low pressure or high pressure fuel pump is not coping we're not going to do any of those today this is more like a, i just want to explain to you how this work and what you can do so let's start up let's open our vcds at this current moment, you want your laptop plugged in by your OBD port. You also want to make sure your car's ignition is on. So after you open the VCDS, 
we want to go to select the control module and obviously at this point you want to select your engine because we are requesting the information from the engine so it is 01 so you're at this point is going to quickly try to connect to the ECU of the computer as you can see here I think it did say can but it, I just saw it too late and now it's going to try to connect to UDS for some reason my car does not want to connect to CAN bus I'm not sure why it always tries to connect to UDS if one of you guys know why just let me know in the comments below I can't really find any information about it so when you're here so UDS or CAN you can still do this so when you're here you're going to see this advanced measurement values so this is where we want to be this is where the magic starts okay so right over here on the right hand side is all your options i mean look at this small block over here you can scroll so far down i mean you can literally search almost anything you want that your car gives you this big block over here is the block where all the information you're going to take is going to be displayed in there so we're going to say engine speed. Engine speed doesn't mean you're going 100 kilometers per hour or 100 miles per hour. It's the engine speed at what it rotates. So, which we all know it as RPM. So there we go. We got our RPM and as you guys can see, it's zero per minute because we're still, uh, the car's in, the ignition is on, but we're not moving or the engine's not rotating or nothing from that sort. So we can actually go and start it up. So here we go. There you guys can see it. Now we're doing the cold start and we are at 1200 about. So we can also go and say, for example, the coolant temperature. So there you guys can see we're at 10 degrees Celsius. So here we can go and add everything. So you can say lambda. Uh, there we go. Okay, but I don't, I don't think this one is going to show too accurate. This is not actually the one I'm looking for. But you guys get what I'm trying to say is that you can search so many things at once. So here comes the thing, right? I just quickly want to switch off so I can just spend some more time to you guys trying to explain to you that you should never try to exceed more than eight things ticked in this box. All right, so the reason why is, is that your computer or the VCDS program, it can allow you to click as many of these boxes as you possibly want. But it's not really ideal for you because uh, the more the VCDS has got to log, the more it's going to struggle to cope with everything, meaning that its end results might not be as accurate as you wished for. So it's better to test eight things at a time. So let's say you want to test, which I'm going to make a video about it in the future, you want to test everything to do with air you want to uh, test your boost your actual boost so it's technically like a set point like your car is requesting 1.2 bar boost and what is your actual what are you getting are you getting 0 0.8 we're getting one bar you're getting 1.5 bar so that is two options already then you want to do like your air intake you want to do your lambda you want to do all of these thingy my bobs all right so we're going to get into that in another video but you want to try to keep it on eight or below it's very important otherwise your results is not going to be as accurate yes you can do everything if you want to but once again i would not recommend it at all also i want to tell you guys that if you are doing this on the street be very careful don't do it <laughs> <laughs> with regulations and stuff, I must tell you guys, don't do it. Uh, and especially when it comes to getting data logs, a lot of people say you need to be in fourth gear. We're not going to do it in real time. Uh, let's say it's on the road, it's a safe road, it's a back road, which I do not uh, want you guys to do it for safety reasons. But if it is, it is, but don't do it. <laughs> so whenever you do it like that, do not do it in fourth gear, do it in a lower gear. You see, one of the reasons why fourth gear is so great is imagine Imagine how long fourth gears take. So if you're at about 2000 RPMs and you put your foot down, like let's say you're on a dyno, you put your foot down, it's going to go two, three, four, but it's going to take very, very long. It's not going to just accelerate like first gear where you have to shift in within a half a second because then your graphs and everything might just spike and you won't be able to see what's going on. So because you're in fourth gear, you're longer, holding that gear longer, it will give the computer more time to take out all the information and print it down for you. All right, so that's one of the reasons why fourth gear is the best. So, but reaching the fourth gear, you'll be at like 200 kilometers per hour or depends on what kind of car you have right so if you do it in third gear yes it's going to be a bit slower but at least you won't end up 
going 200 or exceeding the speed limits or it depends on where you go if it's on a freeway or whatsoever so be very vigilant about this guys it's really serious you can get it injured or if you get in an accident it might not turn out good so rather keep your eyes always focused on the steering wheel and put your laptop right next to you so now we're going to talk about making your logs how to save them how to bring them up and also like how to log your actual car so one thing you always want to do is you want to click here on group UDS. You want to group all the information together in one file and then obviously I will show you guys whenever you upload it where you're going to go and check and unwrap it and unravel it and etc and etc. So then you want to click on this awesome button over here, Turbo. We all like our Turbo. So technically, as you guys can see, the sample rate is much quicker now. It can just try to pull more samples for you. I wish that I've actually uh, opened something for you guys to be able to show you. So now you can either go like save so let's say you want to save this over here okay so we can just say whatever we want to say we can just put in anything i don't even think we we have to put in anything okay so what we want to do is we want to save this log that we can just pull back out so we're going to say browse we're going to say on our desktop okay here we go and we are going to just take this entire thing and say engine rpms okay so we're gonna save it right over there we're gonna press okay so over here it says view print uh we can just go and close this up we don't care about it are you sure okay no no no. let's rather keep that open because that actually tells us that we are using that log in the session right now so what we're gonna do is we are gonna click on log and what i really really like about this is that you actually put in the name before you do your run like so let's say for example with uh what is it um in engineering integrated with them you gotta actually put in the name afterwards so i mean while you're still at a stop like now currently we can change uh, the name but please make sure the csv the dot csv you don't touch that and then also usually for those logs right over here try not to touch that as well i mean you can probably put it wherever you want so if you want to change the name we're just going to go pull these ones out and we're going to say hmm okay well we can also choose browse where we want to put it i think let's also go with uh desktop over there so we're going to say save so there we go users that's that change so we're just going to say log one this is literally my first log so we're going to quickly clear that out perfecto just remember that dot that i accidentally removed okay so now you're going to say start all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say start and then i'm going to start my engine so if let's say for example you're doing your run right now you're going to start accelerating you're going to be in your first gear your second gear your third gear you're going to hold your rpms low you're going to obviously put your laptop right next to you on an exit do not please drive with it on your lap it's not needed to it's made to be absolutely friendly for you you're going to turn around you're going to put it on your seat and you're going to keep your mercer your cursor on start so you're going to go first gear second gear third gear and right before you're going to start accelerating you're going to go over click the start button and as soon as it starts which is going to start automatically you can put your foot to the floor you can accelerate as quick as you can you're going to do your full third gear run as soon as your car shifts automatically over your manual you're going to let off of your throttle and you're going to turn over just click stop as simple as that and then you can go get to a stop still and then you can go and view your data logs so what we're quickly gonna uh, gonna do right now is we're gonna click start because that's exactly what we want to do start and stop is at the exact same point no need to move your cursor i'm gonna go ahead and just start my car so there we go car is started and as you can see there goes our rpms there is our coolant temperature so now it's busy data logging everything or busy writing everything down in a csv folder at the back okay so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give it some time i want to show you guys what happens to the graph and etc and then i'm going to show you guys where to view the graphs because you don't view the graphs on vcds you actually got to go onto a website that allows you to go and check it out so just now the rpms actually dropped off because the cold start is finished we have reached a temperature of 45 and we are idling at 750 so we're just gonna say stop and then obviously we can say done so now we know we are done with that file
So now that we are done logging our car, once again, you want to get to a stop and then you have to go onto your browser. So there's a specific website you go to to actually show you the graphs. The CSV file is just like an Excel spreadsheet. So you won't find a lot of information there or a visual information in that case. So that is where the graphs are amazing. You're going to go to Data Zap. I'll drop the link for you guys in the description. Uh, and also you're on the screen, Data Zap dot me so you're gonna go create yourself a new account and then remember it's 100 percent for free you're just gonna scroll down here to upload logs so the csv file is the one that you're gonna be dragging in here so we're gonna say it's just a normal english one okay so right over here is where you can drag it or you can just click browse and just go and get it so we're gonna quickly move it to the side click over here this is our csv and then we're just gonna drag it in here Drop it straight away, and there it is. It just displayed. So you can actually go, which is kind of cool about this pro, this website or whatever the case is, is that you can go and put like a bunch of things in, like your YouTube URL. You can put your fueling, like if you ran nitros or 95 octane or whatever the case is, your detailing notes, and yes. So you can go and put it on public, or as I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take it off of public. Reason is, is that this is only a test for me so far. It's not going to be an actual data log. So maybe I'll do it public one day. So if you guys also do have data zap, you can go check out my logs. So then you're just going to say save. So just for the showing me, showing you the purpose of this entire thing, I'm not going to go and put any details in it. And straight away here, you can see this is our engine RPMs. Right over here, it was quiet, uh, right here it didn't start. Remember, I pressed the start button, but I was still talking to you guys saying, this is what I'm gonna do now, and I start the car. So our car was off, and it jumped straight up, and it started. It holded the RPMs at about 1,200 RPMs across, and then this part of the year that you guys see is dropping, this is when the cold start is actually finished. So then it just brought it back down to normal temperatures and it just kept it down all the way like that at about 750. So one thing I also want to show you guys that right here at the bottom, you can see the engine speeds and you can see the coolant temperature. So if I click on the coolant temperature now, uh, you're going to see with a green line, it shows you a green line over there. Right over here, it shows you how the temperature actually increased in the time duration. So both of these things were locked together. So imagine having like 20 logs over here at the bottom that you can choose from. How the grass is going to look like, you won't be able to see a lot. So that's why you got to like, my personal opinion, lock different things at different times. So what we're going to do is we can see here, we are, uh, our temperature is actually increasing as we go and it stop right over here, which is about 45 degrees Celsius. So there we go. This is how you log it. I'm going to be doing more videos about this. You see our engine retard, uh, retardation, our boost, boost leaks and all these things. So yeah, I do hope that this helped you guys out. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comments below. I will try to get to them as quick and as soon as possible. If you want to support the channel, make sure to hit this like go right over here if you want to see any of my other videos hit any icons on the screen and then i'll see all of you legends in my next video say it with me peace out